experiencing Jesus, the living God, he who never fails, the one who gave life. He who draws us together, the human spirit, his treasured creation, his presence within us. The human condition is designed to experience and to be moved by its creator. He longs to know us, and so he pursues, so that we, his children, may experience God. Welcome back to Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing the Will of God. Last time we began to look at the truth that God speaks to His people today by His Holy Spirit through the Bible, through prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal Himself, His purposes, and His ways. A common question among believers is, how will I know if God is speaking to me and what He is trying to tell me? Again, it goes back to the relationship. We're going to go back to this over and over again because it's essential. The more time you spend with the Lord reading His Word, His actual words to His people, His actual words to you, and the more time you spend in fellowship with God through prayer, you will learn when He is speaking to you and what He is saying. The more time a couple, a husband and wife, spend together, the more they learn how each other communicates and what they are saying when they communicate, even if they communicate with their body language. Shri and I have been together long enough that she can just flash me a look from across the room and I know exactly what she is trying to communicate to me. Husbands, I'm sure you know what the look is all about. And so I didn't catch it at first, but as we've spent more time together, I've been able to, to see how she communicates, not just with words, but with other other ways of communication. Likewise, it's important for us to know when God is speaking. And the more time you spend with God, the more time you pick up on what God is saying and what he's trying to speak to you. You know, with all the voices that's out there in the world today, it's important to know when and what God is saying. The relationship you have with God is crucial to everything there is to being a follower of Jesus Christ. Is hearing from God about who he is and what his will is important to following God? Absolutely yes. So you must invest the time and the attention in the relationship with God if you're going to be able to hear from him. Last time we looked at how God speaks to us from uh, the Bible and through prayer, how the Holy Spirit uses both of these. You will hear God speak to you as you read his word, the Bible. And from his word, he will direct you by the Bible. Psalms chapter 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. You will hear from God as you fellowship with him in prayer. Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. God will also use, sometimes, circumstances to speak to us. There are certain times in our lives when God will use the situation that we're in to confirm what he has been speaking to us from his word and through prayer. One important factor to look at when trying to decide if something is God's will is to look and see how God has moved in your life up to the present day. In the Old Testament, when God's people had an encounter with God, they would set up stone markers or pillars or altars to mark the place where they had experienced God in order to remember the encounter. When God was calling Abraham to go into the land that he was showing him, the promised land, Abraham set up a stone altar everywhere he had met with God. Jacob set up a stone when he had encountered God at Bethel when he saw the stairway to heaven. Joshua set up a stone monument when God's people was crossing over from 
uh, the median area to, in, to, into the promised land at the River Jordan. Samuel set up a stone marker, and this is one of my favorite. Samuel set up, set up a stone marker when God protected Israel from the Philistines, and he called that stone altar or that stone monument Ebenezer. The Lord has helped us this far. These were constructed in order to give God's people a point of reference to remember how God had revealed himself and his work in their past. You've got spiritual markers in your life, I'm sure, if you're a follower of Jesus. What are those spiritual markers? What has God done in your past to reveal himself to you through circumstances and events? What, what did these moments teach you about God? So God doesn't do anything, I don't think, without an order to it. God is deliberate in what he does. And how God has worked up until now can give you and I some understanding of how God is working at the present. God also speaks to his people through the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, the word of God tells us in his word, Paul writes that, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is is with Christ. The body of Christ, the church, just like our physical bodies, is made up of many members. There's a knee, an eye, a foot, an ear. Each part of the body has a certain function, and each part of the body senses the world around it in different ways. If we relied solely upon just one of its members to the exclusion of others, we would be in trouble. Is it important for the hand to have communication with the eye as to what it perceives about its surroundings? You better believe it. It sure is, especially if there's a hot stove within reaching distance. So it is important that believers hear from other believers, that we spend time with other believers because we need to make decisions based upon how God has informed other members of the body of Christ. We need to have an understanding of the big picture of what God is doing around us. And so this is why it's so important for us to be involved in the local church, that we don't miss Sunday after Sunday because we benefit greatly by hearing how God has spoken through the lives of other believers. The decisions that we make as believers are not normally between good over bad or right over wrong. Normally the decisions that we have to make as God's people are between good and what's best. To hear from God about his will is important, it's vital. So within the relationship that we have with God, we pray and we ask God to make his will plain to us. So what we do is we read God's word as we pray, asking him for a clear word. And when we get up from our prayer time and get up from reading the Bible, we look around with spiritual concentration, looking for ways in which God answers our prayers throughout the day and throughout the days in in circumstances that are around us. We also listen to the counsel and the perspective of other believers If we see all of these four, the scripture, prayer, circumstances, and the church lining up, showing us the same thing, that's a good indication of how God is leading us to know what his will is. Now I want to circle back and emphasize two very important matters before we close out today's study. Number one, it is important to know that God has clearly spoken to us by giving us his word, the Bible. In the question of knowing what God has said about his will, we have a clear word in God's word regarding what his will is about thousands and thousands of subjects. And so I sincerely believe that if we trust what God has said in his word and we're actively obeying what he has already revealed to us as his will from his word, we will hear from him and we will know what we need to know about the other areas of his will, those specific and personal matters when we need to know it. It's about doing first what we already know is God's will. Number two, it is important that 
we spend time in the personal love relationship with God. Again, I can't stress this enough, and you're going to hear me say it almost like a broken record. If you don't spend time alone with God, reading His Word and praying, and spending time in fellowship with Him, of course you won't hear from God in any clear way. And His voice will be lost in all of the noise that's around us. Spend time with God. Spend time in His Word. Spend time alone with Him in that love relationship that He has blessed you and I with so much. I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you for our time together again today. I thank you for how you do speak to us. I thank you, God, for your Word. How clear it is. We who have the Holy Spirit, you have given us your Holy Spirit. You speak to us from your Word. You make clear spiritual truths from your Word. God, I thank you that every time we open up your word, we are encountering you. We are encountering your very words to us. So I pray that, God, that we would seek that as a precious, precious thing every single day that we live. Father, I pray that we'd spend time with you. Spend time over uh, praying about what we read in your word. Praying about what your will is in our lives. Spending time praying about giving us the courage and the faith to follow you and the ability to to adjust our lives to what you're showing us in your word. God, help us the ability to see where you're at work around us in the circumstances. Help us, God, to see in the past how you worked in the past in our lives and are you working up until this very day. Father, help us to hear from the word of, uh, of other believers, how you have spoken to them and how you have uh, how you have given them a clear word and how we can learn from each other's testimony and learn from each other's perspective from how God you have spoken. God, it's not a matter if you have spoken. You have spoken. So help us to hear it. Help us to spend time in that relationship with you to know you in a very intimate way and to be able to know when you're talking to us. Know when, God, you're directing us. And you will be. And you are. So, I pray that we will be able to have eyes to see and ears to hear. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you this week as you continue to seek to experience God every single day. God bless you. Have a great time in your study.